Welcome to NTN Nightly. I am Janelle Norvell. This edition Top Stories. Cruise tourism officially reintroduced to St. Lucia with the inaugural comeback call of Celebrity Millennium. The construction of a new wing at the Vidbutai Primary School commences. And members of the public urge to ensure preparedness for the hurricane season. Cruise tourism has been officially reintroduced to St. Lucia with a cruise call by Celebrity Millennium. The return of cruise tourism to the island is indicative of the reinstatement of revenue for cruise-dependent income earners. Government officials and stakeholders were on hand at broadcast trees to welcome passengers with grand fanfare and treats. Hamadi Mark has details on this momentous occasion. The Castries spot lit up with fanfare as St. Lucia on Tuesday welcomed Celebrity Millennium to Port Castries, the first cruise vessel to the island since the halt in 2020 due to the COVID-19 pandemic. The arrival of the cruise ship signals the reintroduction of cruise tourism to the island and more importantly, the reinstatement of revenue for well over 1,000 cruise-dependent income earners. Celebrity Millennium called into port around 7.30 a.m. with an estimated 400 passenger capacity and government officials and other stakeholders were on hand to welcome them. Prime Minister of St. Lucia, Honorable Alan Chastney, explained the significance of the reintroduction of cruise tourism. We have been working with the cruise industry since March of 2020 and very actively to try to get their return um, which was originally scheduled for October, November of 2020. Um, so to say that a lot of work has gone into this is an understatement. Um, I want to thank the Ministry of Health, the Ministry of Tourism, um, and all of the stakeholders um, for their consistency, perseverance, and sticking through this. Um, so today is the culmination of, of a lot of, of work and effort to see Celebrity Millennium coming back into our shores. Um, and this again, head of schedule. So this is a, a meaningful thing because of the persons that are impacted by the return of the ship. The street vendors, the taxi drivers, the tour operators, all who have depended almost exclusively on this sector have been impacted for the last 16 months. Um, and while we have done some things to try to comfort them, it's certainly not, nothing can ever replace the income that they were generating from this industry. So this is a wonderful sight for them, and we, we are excited, to say the least. Continuous efforts were channeled into the safe return of the cruise tourism to St. Lucia, with regular meetings with the cruise lines, handling agencies, and the locally established cruise committee. High-level meetings were also held with officials of the Florida Caribbean Cruise Association, FCCA, and a focus on safe resumption of cruise calls to St. Lucia. Meetings were also held with several cruise lines to finalize protocols that would guide the sector's operations while on island. The Prime Minister expressing gratitude to all stakeholders for their contributions highlighted the importance of the return, as many individuals depend on the cruise industry for their income. We understood from early how um, the ship's not coming in with a lot of people in Lucia. So that sense of urgency now is represented today. And um, we're just very excited that we are one of the first destinations to recommend services. Executives from Michael Bailey, um, all down to um, the rest of his team 
um, for believing in solution and making this happen today. So to mark the momentous occasion, a plaque was presented to the captain of Celebrity Millennium, affectionately known as Captain Fio. Captain Fio also presented a plaque to the government of St. Lucia, commemorating the inaugural Caribbean Comeback Call. Adding to the fanfare, there were also prizes to be won. The first prize went to a cruise passenger visiting St. Lucia for the first time. Minister for Tourism, Information and Broadcasting, Culture and Creative Industries, Honorable Dominic Fede, expressed elation with the return of cruise tourism to St. Lucia. Oh, well, a tremendous day for St. Lucia. All the workers that have been out of work since um, the pandemic began, this really is an absolutely fantastic day for them. Uh, a lot of self-employed individuals, the vendors at the arcade, the vendors at the craft market as well. Um, I really want to thank the Permanent Secretary and Beverly, the CEO of the Tourism Authority, for the work that they have put in. I want to personally thank the Prime Minister, who really has been leading this from the front on the FCCA task force with the rest of the Caribbean. It's an absolutely amazing day for all of us. Activity manager Al is a Bon St. Lucian and has been working in the cruise industry for over a decade. He indicated that he is ecstatic that cruise tourism is making a comeback, having been out of work for some 15 months. Al said that his job is very rewarding and encourages young people to take advantage of the cruise industry. I can't complain. Traveling the world, um, the, the salary is always, always something to talk about, so I'll not ignore that. The salary is really good. Uh, and meeting amazing people, networking as an entertainer. I've networked with so many people to get opportunities to perform in Los Angeles, in Georgia, in Miami, in Europe. So I, it, it's, it's just a blessing working on cruise ships. Especially young people, if you're not sure what you want to do, even if you, it's not a career you want to take up, I would employ any young person to just um, go to Mampa. There's agencies down here that get you booked to go on cruise ships. Do it. Um, it's a good way to make money if you want to go back to school. It, 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 the money you make that you can't afford to go back to school. So any young person, I would tell them to go into it. However, if you also into hospitality, it's definitely a place where you can be an ambassador for St. Lucia. Because that's what I'm doing right now. Uh, I, I've encouraged a lot of the guests to actually go on tours. And I always say, St. Lucia, I've done the entire Caribbean, and St. Lucia stands out. Honestly, St. Lucia stands out as one of the best out Cox and Company Limited's Chief Operations Officer Catherine Cooper expressed gratitude to all who contributed to the return of cruise tourism to St. Lucia. Cooper indicated that although the road has been challenging, Cox and Company Limited has been persevering and is glad for the return. Our company, our staff, our tour guides, our the drivers of the buses, we have not had any work since the middle of March of 2020, 2020. So today is an unprecedented day. I have been working in the cruise industry from 1984, and we have never, never gone through this sort of interruption in our business. However, Cox and Companies was started in 1926 by my grandparents, and we never stopped, and we're not going to stop now. We are back. I would definitely like to thank the Ministry of Tourism and all that they did to work with us to bring the ships back to St. Lucia and to help us to get ready. I would like to thank the Ministry of Health, Customs, Immigration, our tour guides and staff for everything that they did to make sure that today is going to be an excellent day and that St. Lucia can deliver. The health and safety of St. Lucians remain of paramount importance. As such, safety measures have been put in place at the port. Karen Joseph is the Senior Environmental Health Officer of Port Health. Okay, so this is our public health facility. This is part of, you know, our mandate of, you know, health security at our borders. And as such, our public health facility would screen everyone who's coming in. And of course, today, we are happy to have our first cruise ship. And of course, we actually achieving this mandate of screening everyone as they pass through our facility. 
Continued calls with Royal Caribbean cruises to Port Castries are tentatively scheduled for July 13 and August 10, 2021, while other cruise lines will confirm their itineraries in the near future. From the Government Information Service, I'm Humedi Mark, reporting. The start of construction of a new wing to the Vidbutai Primary School is being seen as a welcoming addition to an institution which has served the community of Laclary and surrounding communities for decades. Chris Satney has more in this report. The Department of Education, Innovation and Gender Relations under the Education Quality Improvement Project EQUIP broke ground recently for the construction of the school block, which will comprise three stories, with the third and second levels, each housing five classrooms, with accompanying male and female washroom facilities. The ground floor will serve as an open breezeway with male and female bathroom facilities. Parliamentary Representative for Castries North, Honorable Stevenson King, in whose constituency the school is located, says he has advocated for the school's upgrade for many years and thinks the new wing to be constructed will add quality to the instruction received by students and boost their ability for higher education at secondary schools of their choice, some of which are located within the district. I believe we are on the home stretch. On the home stretch to the finish line, to ensure that those who are here now, who are students and who are participating in this exercise, can associate themselves with a vision for education in this country, a determination for better education, better school facilities, and the fulfillment of an education institution that can continue to participate in one of the more, if not the most successful education district on the island by having the cream of the crop in secondary education and the cream of the crop in primary education. The sword turning ceremony conducted by the government last week follows on the heels of another conducted just over a week ago for the construction of the Laguerre Primary School. Minister for Education, Innovation, Gender Relations and Sustainable Development, Honorable Dr. Gail Rigobert, says the ministry is actively pursuing the overall transformation of the nation's education sector in order to make those who benefit from it more globally competitive. While many important determinants of effective learning are beyond our systemic control, it is imperative that we collectively optimize the effects that we can control. One undervalued yet key determinant in fostering students' achievement in the physical learning environment or the quality of our school plans, which impacts upon student morale and teacher commitment. The project also provides enhanced parking facilities for staff and visitors, upgraded water storage capacity, and an improved sewage solution for the entire school. The contract for the unit's construction has been awarded to Construction and Industrial Equipment Limited CIE at a cost of 4.5 million EC dollars. Prime Minister and Minister for Finance, Honorable Alan Chastney, told students gathered at the ceremony to embrace their weaknesses in order to overcome them and excel in their education like many before them. You must embrace failure. You must embrace an idea and believe in it until somebody proves to you that it's not true. But now your power of knowledge becomes greater because you've learned firsthand. This is what this new smart school is all about. Government will break ground for the construction of a new unit at the Gordon and Walcott Memorial Methodist School on Thursday of this week. The contract for the unit's construction has been awarded to Prudy's Construction Services Limited at a cost of 6.5 million EC dollars. From the Communications Unit of the Ministry of Education, Innovation, Gender Relations and Sustainable Development, I am Chris Satney reporting. The St. Lucia Meteorological Services indicated that moisture and instability associated with an approaching tropical wave together with a low pressure center will cause cloudiness, showers and isolated thunderstorms over the Lesser Antilles from tonight into Wednesday. 
The system is about 750 miles east of the Lesser Antilles and is moving westward near 23 miles per hour. Some slow development of this disturbance is possible later this week and this weekend. A second tropical wave located over the eastern tropical Atlantic is moving westward near 21 miles per hour. Additional slow development of this system is possible during the next several days. The public is reminded that St. Lucia is currently in the hurricane season and that the necessary steps must be taken to ensure safety and preparedness in the event of a hurricane. The National Emergency Management Organization, NEMO, advises the following. Before the hurricane, ensure you know your emergency shelters. Trim overhanging branches from trees around your home or property. Develop an emergency communication plan. Secure buildings by boarding up windows and doors. Store valuable documents in a waterproof container or Ziploc bag. Develop a family disaster plan. Have a disaster kit or disaster supplies on hand. Place indoors any loose outdoor objects and secure those which cannot be brought inside. One must ensure that a disaster kit includes water, non-perishable food items, flashlight, batteries, portable radio, first aid kit, essential medicines, change of clothes, mask and sanitizer. During a hurricane, individuals are advised to listen to the radio or television for hurricane updates. Stay inside away from windows or glass doors. Avoid open flames such as candles and kerosene lamps. If power is lost, turn off major appliances to reduce power surge. After a hurricane, individuals are advised not to go outside until the all-clear is given. Only Nemo can issue an all-clear order. Be aware of outdoor hazards such as downfallen trees and broken power lines and report them to the relevant authority immediately. Avoid flood water because it may have harmful contaminants and dangerous debris. CARICOM Secretary General opines that the region should be concerned about the recently disclosed G7 tax proposals. To Sanking English Francis of CARICOM News Time has the details. CARICOM Secretary General Ambassador Erwin Leroy says the region should be concerned about the soundings of G7 Finance Minister's agreement to reform the global tax system by the introduction of a global minimum corporate tax rate for multinational entities. When they met in London recently, G7 finance ministers endorsed the principle of a global minimum rate that proposes multinationals pay tax of at least 15% in each country they operate. Reacting to the agreement when he appeared on Prime Minister Roosevelt's Carrots Facebook program Anu Palais, the CARICOM Secretary General said the gold post for international tax governance continues to be moved. They keep moving the gold posts. When it suits them, when it was suiting them in their, in their phase of development, it was quite trying. Now that they have reached a certain level and they are saying, well, you must follow us and not do, not do like we did before. And it's a real problem. And again, I can only say to them, that is where the combined voices of CARICOM countries matter, whether it's in the international financial institution whether it's to the European Union. Because, you know, sometimes they do want things from us. And I've seen sometimes when we have held our ground that maybe they might reconsider a particular position. And I think we have to recognize that the strength that we have, our combined strength is greater than the sum of the individual member states. It is greater. And I think we have to exercise that. CARICOM Secretary General Ambassador Erin LaRock speaking there. The public is hereby advised that effective Tuesday, 6 July 2021, the psychiatry outpatient clinics at the St. Lucia National Mental Wellness Center will start at 8 a.m. and end at 1 p.m. every Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday, except for holidays. Anyone who needs to make an appointment to be seen at the clinic should call one of the following telephone numbers. 4585949. 458-5976 or 458-5977. This is NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson with the NTN Nouvelle Aquayol. Be aware of and follow water conservation practices. Here are a few tips to help you save water. 
Wash dishes in a basin of water instead of a running tap. Soak pots and pans instead of letting the water run while scraping them. Check toilets for leaks by putting dye in the tank. If color shows in the bowl without flushing, there is a leak. A leaking toilet can waste thousands of gallons of water. Use a bucket instead of a hose to wash cars and reuse grey water from laundry to water plants. Water conservation reduces energy consumption and strain on the water distribution system. Conserve water whenever possible and remember, every drop counts. A message brought to you by the Water and Sewage Company Incorporated, WASCO. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Aquayol. Monsieur Ta, Janelle, Monsieur Madame de Batma, qui est responsable pour l'information à gouvernement cette ci ça c'est GIS, à CBP, Télévision Nationale, puis à NTN, Capositou Nouvelle Aquayol, présentée Primus Hutchinson. Bato to his celebrity millennium, a tree and lawad cast to you, Madi Livet Nef J. Debil Vete, Pokumase Operation Service Touristic, a pay set the sea. Debi apwe, Maladi Coronati, a wete tout operation des affaires touristic, a pay ya. A kosi, a wijon kawebla. Celebrity millennium, we ve a set the sea, a pepe set enemy, for mate, a pe cat so passager tourist, plaisir officier tourist, a clot agence des affaires touristic. Et présent, pour bienvenir les étrangers à bord bateau de Rissala, à ce moment les officiers bateau à même, les capitaines, et puis travail. Ministre des Affaires touristiques, Honorable Dominique Fede, était très excité et qui remercie toute agence qui coopère pour faire un nouveau développement salarié en succès. Et faire référence particulièrement pour ces rivandes là qui dépend à son secteur touristique, cette ci Et aussi, remercier le Premier ministre. C'est aussi Honorable Alain Chasté qui était pour une conduite initiative salariée depuis un commencement. Le ministre Fédé a déclaré que Jodia, c'est un jour qui est magnifique et absolument excitant. Pour lui, le Premier ministre de l'ICIA, l'autorité touristique, le département touristique, les chauffeurs taxi, les rivandes et tout l'autre qui est dépend à ce secteur touristique à cette ici. Premier ministre Honorable Alain Chasté a parlé de de gwe valè ek signifikans ki vizitasyon bato turist sa la kapote pou set le si. Ek presepalman, kom set le si, se premye pou komanse vizitasyon. E ni espwa sa kay kontune pou lot lane e pi tan pou vini. E pi pe ya sa kontune pou menaje maladi korona. Yo si wou mersye tout ki travay wèd e pi pou fè gwan vizitasyon bato turistik sa la pou set le si yon sikse. Yo si swete se etwajez la bien vini et pour prendre l'avantage, bonne volonté, c'est toi un pays. Visitation par tout le Celebrity Millennium pour cette ici, c'est moutons des affaires touristes qui a vivé en plein accord côté les business et les travailleurs en secteur touristique qui a dépassé seulement à ce business en secteur salaire pour vivre ni à ce salaire approché encore. Puisqu'il y a 1000 travailleurs touristiques qui ont payé pour sa vie et trouver l'occasion de bénéficier de ce salaire. Tout ce qu'a fait en bas de Jid, pour faire assurer qu'il peut y avoir bien protégé sa santé publique, par de yon établi yon bon programme de management touristique qui a fait un différent grade pour ce que ça a vivé en opération. Département éducation, c'est le site récemment marché officiellement placement pour bâtir établissement nouveau à l'école de Gaswekti à Vite Bouteille. Établissement neuf sala, qui a trois étages, côté deuxième et troisième là, qui a porté 5 chambres pour les sons et qui a aussi facilité pour vite pour nous nommer les femmes. La première chambre, qui a la principalement, qui a facilité pour fraîcher et qui a aussi facilité pour vite pour nous nommer les femmes. Le représentatif en Kai Parlement pour la façade de notre castle, Honorable Stevenson King, a délivré un adresse qui dit qu'il y a longtemps qu'il y a demandé pour nous faciliter comme ça à l'école de Bouteille, côté où nous ajouté à l'école là. Honorable King fait comprendre. Initiative Sala, qui a été à son habilité, c'est étudiant, pour performer trois primaires en route pour accomplir un plus haut degré d'éducation. Ministre King a dit que l'école a été une meilleure facilité, car ça instruit ces étudiants plus facilement et établit un esprit de vision accomplir plus que ça aujourd'hui. Ministre de sa fait éducation, Honorable Dr. Gail Rickabout, a déclaré que 
ministère de l'éducation qui a poussé pour établir un système d'éducation qui est très avancé pour ça transformer le secteur d'éducation cette fois-ci pour placer les étudiants pays à une position au point l'avantage compétition de l'éducation n'importe côté en la terre. Premier ministre cette fois-ci nous a Alain Chasne conseillé ces étudiants là pour embrasser ça yo ka kwè ki a fave yo ek pavay wèd et puis prinsip ça là pour bâtir à sou valeur et pouvoir éducation yo. Projet neuf là en l'école ti garçon ek fi en vide bouteille ka aussi ni facilité pour ni travail ek aussi moun ki ka visiter là ki ka ni ek ki ka ni on meilleure facilité pour chain glo aussi projet ça là en ba compagnie Construction and Industrial Equipment Limited et qui a coûté 4.5 millions de dollars. La Kaini a l'autre projet pour faire à l'école Methodist Gordon and Walcott Memorial qui a coûté 6.5 millions de dollars et ses compagnies Rudy's Construction Services Limited qui a bâti. L'IME pour Ville-Castui, Peterson Francis, déclare que cette ci kaini yon an se pime facilite la plas ki ka existe a ouja kaya la. Construksyon ouja sa la ki ka kote 32 milyon dola komanse an ane 2019 ek pou li prezan la ni yon sa tikabe ki biyo organize pou li wivadez opoye. Plan plas pou komanse diwan lan e sa la menm sa se lan e sa la menm dezyem faz proje a pou bati cham pou machan preson ek vyan ek privit nef. La kanyo osi restoran, plizye etablisman pou li wivan des van, divers atik pou li touris. An pami pli li lot go a facilite ki twe avanse pou li touris ka vizite. La yon osi kanyo yon marketing board nef, ek se wuzo ki yon jawi plase sa ki ka existe a prezan. Di me kastu deklare ki konsit de vil kastu jafè konyi pe ou etabli yon facilite ki twe konfortab ek bi organize pou li wivan des. Ife sa di wan an komisa swe pe mwen à sa télévision NPN. Avant, il y a eu des éclairs de la pluie, de soleil, des éclairs. Actuellement, nous avons fait une place côté où nous avons fait un display de la bière pour faire tout le monde, spécialement pour les touristes qui viennent, parce que nous avons ouvert la place, nous avons la place de la bière pour les touristes. Donc, si vous mangez bien, vous gardez ça, vous avez fait, vous pouvez vendre tout le monde. Si tout le monde a une place, si vous avez une place comme ça, vous avez fait ça. Ou pa wè presyon lè chèmè, presyon ka vann yon plan. Se ou moun ka lè la, ay gen, bòti ou tou pantou. Sa ka jèn plis, sa ka jèn lè, sa pa wè pa wè jèn zè. Kompetisyon. Kompetisyon. Se pa kompetisyon. Nou nou tout, zèt tout vle vè vè, se jèn wè se yon plas la. Sa y pou improve sa hòt ka fè ya, e bi, nou ka, nou ka, nou, 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 zèt nou yon mè ya, e bi yon gvèdman ki ka travay an lè te vizèt. Ek, yon ka wèmi preske tout lè. O, mè lè mè akam, pa mè tu sel, di kou wèmi ka wèmi yon. Misè lè mè Francis palè osi a sou plan pou etabli parkin meters pou yon di l'auto gawe lè mè an vil kaspi. Yon osi pou met pou kontine pou touve yon solisyon pou se moun ki pani bon tèt, abè bon sevel ki ka duve vay te vay o li wèmi vil kaspi. Ek se konsa, misè madam, nou atou about nouvel la. Mwen ka yon mese ou tan, ou ka gade, mwen ka bwari yon invitasyon, pou chere pi mwen ako, di di kose ve la vi, lè nga yon pou se tou lot nouvel, akwe yon apwe sa, la se lè, mwen vye pou se tou, jene. Mersi yon pil primus. That brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7pm, with a repeat at 7am. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Janelle Norville.